What is going on guys? Welcome back to another vlog. Tomorrow morning we have a 21 mile run. We're prepping for the Boston Marathon. We're about three weeks out. We're gonna be going for a sub 250. 21 miles tomorrow morning. Let's do it. So unfortunately Bree is at work tonight, so it's just me here at home with the two dogs and I just got done making dinner. Let me show you what I have. So this was about half a cup of uncooked rice, turns into about one and a half cups of cooked rice. So that'll equal out to about 90 to over 100 grams of carbs, lots of carbs in there. And then over here we have chicken curry. Let's try the rice first. It's pretty hard to mess up rice. Rice is great. Let's try the chicken curry. Mm. It's actually chicken thighs, so it's even healthier. And that right there is a delicious pre-run meal. All right, so the night before a long run like this, I will lay out all my fuel, all my gear, everything that I need the night before. That way, when I wake up, I don't have to think about it. I'm not gonna have to worry about missing something. So prior to the run, I'll be doing a scoop of this. This is Redmond's Relight Electrolytes. It's got 800 milligrams of sodium per serving. So I'll do three scoops of this tomorrow in this water bottle, which is 20 ounces. Custom water bottle with my logo and slogan on there. You can get these on my website, shameless plug. And this Morton Drink Mix 320, a Morton Solid 225 bar. And then during the run, because you gotta fuel during the run as well, not just before, I'm gonna have one Morton Gel 100 at mile five, mile 10, and then at mile 15, this is the Gel 100 Calf 100 from Morton. In addition to the gels during the run, I'm also gonna have another Drink Mix 320 in my handheld water bottle right here. This holds, I believe it's 18, 17 or 18 ounces of water. If you take anything away from this, test all of this stuff during your training. Don't show up to race day with no plan, just, oh, I'm gonna grab stuff at the aid stations. You gotta practice this stuff during training Get your stomach used to it, get your mind used to it. And that way when you show up on race day, you got a routine down and you don't have to think about it. I highly recommend practicing during training and that's exactly what I'm gonna do tomorrow. It is about 7 a.m. Saturday morning. I'm all fueled up. I just drove down here to the loop where I do all of my long run workouts here in Austin and uh, ready to go rip 21 miles. So let's go do it. Down the half goes. So for this morning's workout, we've got 10 miles easy, and then we have 10 miles at 6.45 pace. I think the last mile or two, so from like 18 to 20, I'm gonna push down just a little bit towards marathon pace, about 6.25, and we've got one mile cool down for a total of 21 miles. All right, we are 10 miles into the run, a little over an hour, gonna drop off the camera, Grab my water bottle. It's getting hot, so stripping off the jacket. All right, we've got 11 miles to go, 10 fast miles with a cool down mile. So I'm leaving the camera here. We'll see you in about an hour. All right, 21 mile run complete. We had 21 miles, two hours, 40 minutes at an average 737 minute per mile. Honestly, I felt pretty good through that. Um, first 10 miles, Averaged about an 820 pace. Just cruise through those. I'll read off the splits from mile 11 down to 20. So we had 706, 655, 705, 647, 649, 654, 657, 650. And then on mile 19, went down to marathon pace, 626, 650, and then a cool down mile at 748. That's a workout right there. Feeling good, feeling strong, legs are good. Mind is good. Ready for Boston in three weeks. Let's go get some food. What are you doing? Hi. Right, 
just got home. The first thing I do after every long run is try and get food in as quick as possible because I burned almost 3,000 calories during that workout. So my body is in like major calorie deficit mode. So I want to try and replenish all that food and fuel. So first thing I'm going to do is make some food. And let me say, I am never hungry. I literally have to like force feed myself after these long runs. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know if this is a common thing with other runners, but I'm never hungry. I get hungry the day after or like sometimes in the evening. I don't know, do you guys get the same way? It's so strange to me, um, but literally just have to force feed myself basically. I'm thirsty, I get very, very thirsty. Man, that's not a problem to drink, but food is so challenging. So I'm gonna have some pasture raised eggs from HEB. Gonna have probably four of those, some pre-cooked chicken breast. Gonna have about six to eight ounces of that. Along with our chicken and eggs, I'm gonna be having Kodiak cake pancakes, but I don't know, I'm tired, I'm hungry. I just gotta, I gotta get some food in my body. plate of four eggs and our chicken breast. I have this pretty much every day, so it's not anything spectacular, um, but it tastes good. It's simple, it's healthy, we're gonna eat it. All right, let's dive in to this bad boy. Mm -hmm. I'd say we crushed it. All right, I'm gonna go shower, and then uh, Brie and I have some cool plans later on today, so we'll see you then. Every Saturday, Bree and I go out and do family things like going shopping, farmer's market, going on a walk, something along those lines. And we were planning on going for a walk today, but we got stuck in Target for like two hours. So went to Ulta, went to Target, grabbed some Starbucks. Pretty chill Saturday so far. But I will say after a long run, one of the best ways to recover and feel better the days following is to not just sit on your butt all day. It seems natural, but if you get up and walk around and stay active throughout the day, it makes you feel a lot better. Where is this coming from? He was trying to find a seat everywhere in the store. Well, I wanted to walk around, and then when I would find a seat, I wanted to sit down in it. Suit me. You just told them not you're gonna want to sit down, but don't. yeah, but no. I mean, don't just lay on the couch all day. Get outside and go do stuff. Move your body. Like we still walked around a lot today. But anytime I saw a chair, I grabbed it and I sat down. He sure did. But now we're gonna go home. We're gonna plunge together. Together. Let's do a together plunge. Should we? And then get ready for dinner and the show later on. I haven't said what the show is yet. Ooh. Ooh. All right. We'll see you at home. Bye. All right, the cold plunge is set to a nice 39 degrees Fahrenheit, and we are ready to rip it. <laughs> this is our first time couples cold plunging, so let's see how it goes. We're probably gonna splash water everywhere, but we'll see how it goes. Three, two, one. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Where are my legs gonna go? I don't know. Go, go under. Woo! 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 Man, I gotta say, I feel so good after the cold plunge. I was listening to a Dr. Huberman podcast yesterday. Uh, I think it was one with Joe Rogan. And he was saying how if you could encapsulate the effects of the cold plunge on your mind and just the physiological benefits into a pill and sell it as a drug, he said it would be the most powerful popular drug in the world because uh, I think it was dopamine, adrenaline, and norepinephrine, or it was three types of those, those chemicals in our brains that get released from cold plunge. He said it was a lot higher of a release of those than you get from most drugs. So I don't know, I feel it, I believe it. I love the cold plunge. I was feeling kind of tired and lethargic 
um, all morning and then I get in there and I just feel so much better. That thing is truly magical. And so in terms of, you know, deliberate cold exposure, people like to say, oh, it doesn't burn much fat, it blocks hypertrophy. But if you look at the mental benefits of having your catecholamines, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, systemically elevated to two to three X for four to six hours after a 30 second to three minute protocol, you're not gonna show me a drug or a form of exercise that can do that. I'm gonna do some like stretching and some band work stuff right now. Um, probably not gonna lift today, but just gonna do some like real light movements, get the blood flowing and uh, get the legs loosened up just a little bit. That quick little band routine takes about five to 10 minutes. Super short, super simple. And even just from that, my legs feel so much better already. I'm sure the plunge helped with that a little bit, but I try and do that band routine a few times a week, um, definitely after a long run or a speed workout. And it just really helps get those muscles loosened up and uh, help speed up recovery. So I highly recommend getting one of these or a set of them. You can get them on Amazon for super, super cheap. They're like. 15, 20 bucks, and they are worth every dollar. I'm gonna go shower, get ready, and we're going to dinner and a really fun show tonight. So super excited for that. Catch up with you in a little bit. Bree and I are on our way into downtown Austin. We are going to dinner at a place called Juniper. It's an Italian place. There's like five course meal. Um, I don't really know how it works. We've never been there, but it sounds delicious. We've heard it's really good. And honestly, any place you go to in Austin is just 10 out of 10. We've yet to have a bad meal here. So yeah, we're going there. And then following dinner, we have a comedy show. We're going to see Chris D'Elia at the Moody Center in downtown Austin, and we're super pumped. So we'll see you after dinner. Dinner at Juniper was delicious. We had some lovely bread to start with. We had a five course meal with salad, pasta, steak, cod, dessert. It was super good. Did you like it? We had potato puffy cakes and some raw salmon. I forgot about that. I got a risotto and Jeremy got a gnocchi. 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 And then we finished it off with some zeppole <laughs> dessert and I got a chocolate coconut cake. Yeah, it was very, very good. Cool vibes, cool restaurant, good food. Um, now we are heading to the comedy show. Yes. So we will uh, see you afterwards. Can't wait. It's going to be so funny. Haha. <laughs> yes. We'll see you later. Later? We'll see you later, alligator. <laughs> All right, we just got done with Chris D'Elia in downtown Austin. He was pretty damn funny. What'd you think? It was good. Favorite comedian so far, and we've seen like 10 of them this week. Yeah, earlier this week we went to Joe Rogan's new comedy club. Yeah, the Comedy Mothership. Saw a bunch of comedians there. That was great, but Chris D'Elia just killed it. Super funny. It was a good time. Yeah. But that is the vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share it with a friend, all that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next video.